What's up, y'all? Today, I was going to talk to y'all about Brian Robinson. He recently had an interview, and in that interview, he spoke about what he went through last year. And if you don't know, he was shot, and he was shot multiple times. And you probably won't believe this, but it was by a kid. And it was like, when you think about that, right? And he was shot twice, one in the glute and then one in his leg. And it's like, how do you even recover from that? How do you even, and, and then, you know, what's crazy. The crazy part about it was he had to have surgery and he missed, um, four games in the beginning of the season and one in the middle of the season somewhere, or I think towards the end. But so he basically only played 12, 12 games. And I'm just like, bro, like it take a lot of heart to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, just think about it after he got shot. Right. He's in the hospital. And then after the hospital, you got to go and, you know, you got to go to rehab and re rehabilitate yourself. You know what I'm saying? I'm like just thinking about the fact that he had to do that and then went to go play a physical game on top of that. Imagine what that does to somebody mentally. And he had to play through that. And he said, like, he wasn't really himself last year. I honestly couldn't tell. But I can see how that would affect somebody's game. And he said this year um, he's feeling much better. And he said, you know, when, when you think about it, regardless how he felt, he knew no matter what, he, this, was, this was the only thing he had. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is the only way I can feed my family. You know what I'm saying? I got to get back out there and I still have to prove myself no matter what type of injury I have, you know what I'm saying? And I, just think about it, think, just think about this world. Like, no matter what you go through, you still gotta work. And that's crazy, like, to, just to think about. Like, I was shot twice, and I still had to go out there and fight, you know what I'm saying? That just tell you a lot about him. <laughs> he was in the third round, so he got four years, you know, that, you know, they can pick up on. So, I mean, they got four years with him. He don't got a fifth year option because he wasn't a first rounder. But if he did, I definitely would have picked it up. I would have picked up the fifth. You know what I'm saying? Like, just think about what he did for you in the first year. And 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 I'm just thinking, like, in his um in his interview, he spoke about Eric Bieniemy, and he just spoke about like how he liked what Eric is doing, and how because of Eric's history and him being a former running back and how that that's kind of making him trust more in whatever Eric is saying to him. And then he also said that Ron Rivera believes in him. I think what Eric is doing to the team is great. You know what I'm saying? Because when you think about Eric and his history, he used to work with Adrian Peterson. You know what I'm saying? Do do you not know who Adrian Peterson is? Like, the one of the greatest running backs in the league. And, you know, he did have talent, you know. But when he came into the league, Eric was right there. And, and just, he made Adrian Peterson understand that it's more than just your position. It's a team effort. So, he had brought that to the team and he made everybody around him realize that hey you might be a running back but you do got a block and you know Adrian Peterson understood that so like when I when I don't have the ball I have to protect my other teammate because at the end of the day if something happens to my quarterback then what happens to the team and imagine how important and, and we all know how important it is to have a great quarterback especially in the playoffs so it start with I got to do my job and I also got to help somebody else do their job. So if you're a running back, you got to block and imagine what's going to happen to your quarterback or your wide receiver or whoever you got to block for. If they go down, that means it's more work on you. So that's what Eric brings to the table. And, and, and Brian understands that. And he understands that, you know, what he doing is great. And, they kind of need him. And I like what he's bringing to the table. And, you know, before they used to have Turner. And um, 
I don't know what to tell you on, on Turner, but he made it to the playoffs. I think that was 2020, um, the last offensive coordinator we had. But, you know, um, in the last few years, um, recently, last year was eight, we was eight and eight and one. And then before that, I think we was like seven and 10. And when you think about it, it's like he, and, the, and then another thing you got to think about is he came with Ron Rivera from when Ron Rivera came from the Panthers. So I can see why he was there. But, um, you know, uh, when you think about it, it's like um, Ron might have had a hard time getting rid of him. But he had, what, probably four years to prove himself, including the one that he had in the Panthers. And it's just like, you know, I think we just need more, you know. And, and just think about it. Somebody who's never won a um, Super Bowl versus a guy that had two Super Bowls. And don't get me wrong, Turner had an, a, a lot of time to prove himself. But, you know what I'm saying, sometimes your time is up, you know. And we got to, and in the league, you know how rough the league is. If you can't do it, I'm going to find somebody else who can. You know what I'm saying? And that's how it is when it comes to injuries. So back to, you know, Eric. He's a great person to have on the team. And I think he's really helping them understand that it's not an individual game. It's a team effort. And that, and he, he's trying to make, you know, Washington the new Chiefs. When you think about it, they both have the same playing style. Because um, uh, I've seen that uh, the Chiefs, run uh, RPO uh, offense, and Washington does as well. It, all it takes is that extra play to win the game most times. And Eric bring that, you know what I'm saying? Like, especially when he was in the uh, Super Bowl. And, you know, everybody never gives him his credit. And, you know, uh, what's his name? Andy Reid. Andy Reid gives him his credit all the time, but people don't even pay attention to it. He said it in the Super Bowl many times. He gives credit when credit is due, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, just because we don't know what's going on, don't mean he's doing nothing. And then just imagine, like, you think Eric Bieniemy, throughout his five years as an offensive coordinator, you think he just sat on the sideline and just held up the paper and just was talking into the headset for no reason back to Washington and how he's going to help Washington. And then think about this, though. Ron Rivera, he has a defensive mindset, you know. Think about the fact that, you know, everything that um, Eric has done has been on offense. And he's also a assistant head coach. So think about this. Maybe he might be calling all of the plays this season he might be or majority of them and um it just seems as though he might be be just because of his background and his history and ron rivera's history and uh you know it and uh del rio is doing a good job you know i mean he's been doing a good job and you know hopefully he can continue to you know boost it up on the defense especially if we get um if we keep Chase Young, because it seems like I've been hearing a lot of rumor of uh, people trying to get rid of him, and I don't think I don't think that should happen. But yeah, um, Eric is doing a great job, and then um, Brown also spoke about just uh, how he took that time to you know spend with his family, and that really made him feel good. And you know, um, he said this year, he said this year, this year gonna be electric. He said it's gonna be electric, and when somebody say electric, and they just glide that jump like that, electric, you know it's gonna be a good year, and I, I feel like it's gonna be a great year, and uh, you know, I really hope the best for Brian, and you know, I hope that he had had enough time. I know it's gonna take a lot more time to heal from that, but you know, I hope that he continues to heal from it. And he seeks help. And I hope that his team is there for him, you know, in every way possible. And, and you know, just because he had a traumatic situation happen to him don't mean everybody else on the team didn't have a traumatic situation happen to them throughout their life. 
So I just hope that, you know, everybody understand that it's a team effort and you have to be even on and off the field. You still have to be a teammate to that person. And, you know, I just hope that, you know, they coming together and, and understanding that, you know, even though we play football together, I'm still here for you. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and I believe it's St. Brown or and Foster on the defense. They got a great bond. Foster went to Brown's wedding. You know, it's crazy, but, you know, it's certain things like that that just bring you together even more. It'd be times where you don't even have to say anything on the field. You just make a head nod, and they know, all right, we're going to blitz on this side, or we're going to fall back, you know? But that's, that just comes from being around each other and forming that bond. So um, Brian had a great interview, and I just feel like this year is really going to be his year. And think about it. He only played 12 games. Imagine if he played 17. And I felt like he would have reached that 1,000 mark. And, you know, it's just crazy how many targets um, Sam Howell going to have this season and just how, like, I feel like we're going to be a top 10 defense, I mean, top 10 offense. And we might even be a top 10 defense if they keep Chase Young. But, you know, with all that being said, this year going to be electric.